hadn't seen one of my boards out yet. It was like an eight-year-old girl got off the chairlift on my board, and my heart just kind of like sang. I was like, <gasps> and I was like, I gotta say something, you know? <laughs> I got a crush over there. I was like, pretty cool board you got there. And I'm like, covered it. You don't I know what I look like. She's like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> What is going on, everyone? I'm Nils Mendnick, and this is the Backcountry Podcast, a show aimed at providing insight into the outdoor industry by interviewing people who operate within it. Today, we are going to be talking with none other than Sean White, a man who needs little introduction, but let me refresh your memory. Sean's snowboarding career will likely go down as one of the most dominant competitive snowboarders to have ever lived three-time Olympic gold medalist, countless other wins, practically two decades of being on top of the game. He hasn't stopped at just snowboarding, though. Sean has also won multiple gold medals in skating at the X Games, started his own band, and most recently, started his own clothing brand. There is so much to learn from this guy, and I am freaking stoked for today's Yo. conversation. What up, bro? What up? Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. How, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good. Nice. Yeah. Um, you're kind of just the intro. Yeah, totally, man. Dang. It was easy. I know there's only so much to cover. I was like, well, I got to bring, I was like, I almost you're forgot like, about the skating. He was the best dancer. He was the best, the best dancer. He, he had he the won, killer moves. He, he won class flirt in high school. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I always kind of like, at this point, I forget about the skating and yeah. how like that was such a heavy part of, of you and your personality and, and like your career <clears> growing yeah. up. Like, what was like that as a kid, just balancing the two? Like, yeah. was it harder? Or were you just psyched on like yeah. switching between the two sports effortlessly? Well, it was wild because like I, you know, I loved skateboarding and I would skateboard just as hard as I snowboarded. And I lived probably 20 minutes from the skate park. So it was like probably my first passion was skateboarding. And then snowboarding came later, but snowboarding had the sponsorships and stuff right away. I think because the sport was more expensive to do, we kind of like as a family of five for lift tickets and things and, you know, or it was, you know, decided my mom probably pushed me in that direction. I don't, I don't really remember, um, but I loved them both. And, and because of the sponsorships and stuff in snowboarding, in the competing in snowboarding, I always had the skateboarding kind of take a back burner and whenever you do that, it's kind of the grass is greener. So I was snowboarding, but like dreaming of skateboarding. Like I just wanted to be a skateboarder. I thought it was so cool. And, you know, you know, seeing the pros at the local skate park I'd go to, I just like lucked out like Tony Hawk and Bob Burnquist, Bucky Lace, like all these guys skated at my local park. <clears throat> but it wasn't until probably I went pro at 16, I want to say, and it was a difficult thing to do because all of the major amateur, amateur contests were during like big winter events. So I couldn't just like cut out and, hey, I'm not going to X Games this year because I'm going to do this amateur skate event. Um, so I kind of like jumped the rungs in the ladder and went pro right away at one of the major events. Um, but it was almost out of necessity, I swear. Like, you know, I was, I was sponsored and I was getting paid handsomely to be a professional snowboarder. But with that, like, dude, I'm from the beach in California. I missed home. I was like this stuck in this kind of year round winter. And because there's snow somewhere, we're in New Zealand, we're in Chile, we're, we're all over. And so I was like, look, I'm going to go pro and skateboarding so I can kind of tell my sponsors, like, it's, it's not that I'm going to just be sitting on the couch. I'm going to be home skateboarding. So you'll still see me like wearing the logo on TV. I'll still be doing whatever, but I'll be skateboarding. And that kind of created this like, you know, these two worlds for me that I just kind of cycled through for like, I don't know, 10 years or more. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Man, that's really cool. I never um, really understood that way because from an outsider's perspective, it kind of just seemed like, you know, you're, you're psyched on both. You're doing yeah. both. You're yeah. like going pro at both. That's, yeah. that's well, pretty was, cool. But yeah, it definitely, yeah, no, was, totally. But like, that, that, like there's another little layer that to like, it. Yeah. you know, perspective, I guess to like almost hold on to something that not to say it was more meaningful to you in a way, but have yeah. something that like, did it feel more like your own, like you had more ownership over it in a way, or it was like more personal? No, I mean, I just felt like one, I felt like there was more room to be like innovative because you're flipping and the board's flipping. So I was like, Oh, I can like create new tricks. Like, you know, there's more variety, more variations. And then again, like being in the winter scene and like, I was just like, I really wanted a skateboard and I would watch those like Tony Hawk gigantic skate park tours. I was like, man, maybe one day, like 
I'll be good enough. And they'll ask me to come along or this or that. And, and so I was daydreaming about it. And then finally, like, I remember the day I, I saw Tony at the ramp. I was like, so dude, I think like I had this big speech prepared. I was like, I think I'm going to go pro and skateboard. And he's like, cool. <laughs> it was still this huge buildup for nothing. He's like, it's about time. You know what I mean? He's like, you're doing all the moves. Uh, yeah, for sure. And so whatever, man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I wanted his like, his like blessing on it, you know? And he was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> are, are, are you going to go? Or are you going <laughs> to? And so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely felt like it was, it was like watching, you know, a movie where, you know, a superhero or something gets his powers. You know what I'm talking about? Sorry, I had a long flight. My analogies are going to get weird. But oh, dude, lay so in like, them. I love you where you're know going what's going to happen. You kind of feel like, oh, okay, here's Peter Parker. He's going to get bit by the yeah. spider. Now he's figuring out he can do this and that. Like yeah. for me, it was doing that all over again. So like snowboarding, I think I had already, you know, pretty much, you know, I, I was winning X Games. I was I was on my way to the Olympics, things like that. And then I was starting at the bottom of the barrel again in skateboarding. So I was like, oh wow, like I get to do this all over again. I get to climb this ladder. And and it was a weird thing to be, you know, considered the best in something and then just trying to earn my stripes in in a different field. But it was so fun and so exciting and the pressure was off. Hmm. No one was expecting me to win. No one was like, oh, I, I didn't win today. You yeah, know what I mean, I, I yeah. got to just cruise in there and be the underdog for a moment, <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. Which, I mean, was yeah. that, did that kind of help like build your motivation during, during like the rise of, of your skateboarding? You know, like, mm -hmm. cause in a way it's, you, you know, yeah, 16, you're winning yeah. contests. You, you like Sean White, the snowboarder has arrived mm -hmm. by that point. And yet like, skateboarding was still sort of in that like infancy phase for you and it must have been um did, did you try like pull things from skating to be like oh wow i have it so much easier in snowboarding in some ways and like put like that motivation t back towards snowboarding i think i just applied the same sort of mindset that i did from snowboarding to skateboarding mm. and that's why i say like the movie repeating itself i was like oh okay like i already kind of know if i can just start doing the tricks that the top guys are doing and I can start making my own variety of it and start doing these things like and set and, and try to set myself apart from other skaters like well, what are they not doing and like how can I like because at the time doing big spins and flips and things was pretty intense and um you know now it's crazy I, I just watched a video on the internet of like a nine-year-old doing a back a backside nine to a backside nine and the vert <laughs> ramp was like what the you know what I mean I mean Tony would take all day to nail one of those, you know, maybe. Um, so anyways, I think for me, yeah, it was just like an exciting situation to be in, to be like, okay, cool. Like this is, this is the, the roadmap I need to follow. And then like slowly start like yeah. making my way from like top 10 to top five to top three, and yeah. then, you know, yeah. and it was just exhilarating. Plus I was home, mm. you know, I got to be with my friends. I got to have like somewhat of a normal social life mm -hmm. you know, which was really meaningful to me at the time because i think the biggest fear was burning out and that was something my parents kind of talked to me about a lot and other writers i remember they had they all started like journaling at one point and i remember opening one of their books it was like the first page in this like giant thing was like burn out <laughs> i'm <laughs> over it <laughs> like you know what i mean I, I i think keeping that excitement was like a really big deal for me and i knew that if i kept going on the course of just winter i would have fully quit probably dude i or at least had a had a big crashing moment i then, think yeah man i think that's like very um you know it kind of takes some intuition to acknowledge that and sort of lean into something like that and have something like skating or other passions that we'll we'll get into yeah to yeah. sort of keep that fire alive because i mean i um on a, on a very different scale, that's um, sort of what my like relationship with rock climbing has okay. turned into. That so, I, got, yeah. I got introduced to it when I was in high school, and uh -huh. it's just sort of turned into this a passion in my off-season mm -hmm. that completely resets me. It's something that I like. I not necessarily escape from snowboarding, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you kind of get that, that step away. You get that perspective. Oh, yeah. it, there's a really similar, um, a lot of parallels of like, progression and problem solving and planning yeah. and all that stuff that like yeah. go into the off-season sport in a way but 
there's none of the pressure and there's none of the yeah. expectation and you just sort of get to like almost, yeah, I don't know, enjoy it in like a simpler form. Yeah. And then, and then for me, at least it makes me, you know, made me think like, wow, I, I am way better at snowboarding. I need to like, <laughs> yeah, I should totally. put as much work into snowboarding yeah. as I have on this yeah. stupid climbing thing. And but it's like, fun when you come back to it though, right? Yeah, you're, you're like, like oh wow, refreshed. I know this. Yeah. You're yeah, like, yeah, God, like, I'm so much, yeah, so much good better. This, this is so fun. Great. Yeah. <laughs> It's great not to suck at something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your friends wanting you to play basketball, and you're like, I suck at this, and you finally show up to the ping pong table, and it's all, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's something like you know how to do it, uh -huh. and it's fun when you're good at something. Mm -hmm. You get that. Oh, yeah, that, man. And so the perspective. I remember skating all summer, and then the winter comes, and, and I'm just thinking like, oh, my God. This is gonna be so easy. The board's attached to my feet. <laughs> like, can you imagine? <laughs> like, what could be simpler? You know what I mean? It, it, it just, it, it gave me that like, I feel like skating gave me the precision, like the, like the focus of like, I have to land it this time in my run. And like, you know, skating is crazy. Just the, the slightest flick of your foot in the wrong way and the board's taken off. It's like really hard to be consistent. And so, then I go to snowboarding and I was just like, Mr. Consistent. I could just, I could do the trick every single time because that's what skateboarding gave me that precision, I feel like. And then on the other side of things, I feel like snowboarding gave my skateboarding like the scale, the size. Cause we're doing like 90 foot jumps and you show up to the vert ramp or they're like, oh, this gap's like 10 feet. And I'm like, uh huh. Uh, <laughs> like, okay. And, and? and? <laughs> so we're going to backflip it. We're going to, you know what I mean? Like, we double flip it or what? Like, you know what I mean? All those dudes started doing the mega ramp. And I was like, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not to knock it at all. It's, it's, it's heavy for sure what they're doing. And, and it's gotten even crazier. But at the time, I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've seen these types of hits before. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So. So yeah, I think that that was like a nice thing, a compliment that they gave one another. And like you said, it's not like I was sitting on the couch. Like I was pumping a vert ramp all day, every day. And just the strength in my legs and the focus and all yeah. that didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, totally. It didn't lay dormant while I was like kicking it in the summertime. Yeah, right. I know it's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, <clears throat> I kind of got that a little bit out of biking because something that like climbing doesn't have is it's, it's super slow. Mm. And skating and biking and obviously yeah. snowboarding too, you have this like motion muscle yeah. in a way, right? Yeah. That you're like you can sort of register your your um, awareness and space yeah. and like to have something that keeps that fresh through the off season. Yeah. Um, it's huge. Biking's so much fun. I, yeah. I remember wanting to like start working out and be in the gym and do these things. And I think it was when Soul Cycle was becoming popular. And I remember getting talked into going to a couple of classes and I was just like, I don't think I can hang with this. Like, it's a very emotional. I don't know if you've been to a class. I am not familiar with Soul Cycle now. <laughs> <laughs> you get in this room. Like a spin class? Dude, kind you of it's like, a spin class, okay, but you get I in there kind of and they say Soul Cycle because you get in there and they're like, all right, like, think of somebody that's wronged you and like crank it up because, like, how would that, you know, or like, think of, think of your, someone in your life that said you couldn't, you're, you know, like, amount to anything. Like, there's people tearing up. I'm like, this is, this is heavy. I'm not ready to like take on my, you know, problems <laughs> just you're to, like i'm sorry I just to I spin it out yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, i'm sorry i failed the spelling test in third grade okay I'm you're working just on like it. i love you dad <laughs> like i'm sorry i'm sorry and like, like this is nuts um but i remember being like okay well this might not be for me um and then and then i was like wow why don't i mountain bike there's probably sick trails around i'm always up in the mountains these things and i remember immediately being like this is it this is so much fun so that's that's probably i probably ride my bike every other day if not every day dude that's yeah, awesome it's so much fun yeah and, and and sometimes i'm in la it's a little sketchy but um you know i spend a lot of time in in, in you know the mountains and nevada and other places and like you can just go it's so much fun yeah, yeah. oh totally well i mean like bikes now too are so good that oh, it, like yeah. i got i took like a 10-year break and then i got one of the newer ones a couple of years ago and yeah. i was just like Dude, it it's feels just difference. like snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. like the, yeah, the suspension and the geometry is all dialed in. Yeah. Like, I made really the mistake cool. of buying like a hard tail. Nice. We call it no suspension on the back. Yeah, just like, <laughs> like what the, some dude just blazed good, past me, just like, uh, like <laughs> I was like, what the? Ooh. So I immediately went and took it back. I'm like, I need the, I need the upgrade. Yeah. Well, dude, I want, I kind of want to talk a little bit about one of or if the 
first movie you did, The White Album. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, my dad came home from the snowboard shop in mm -hmm. Stowe and he like was super excited. He like, we didn't really like buy movies or anything. Yeah, yeah. And like, cause we were sort of already competing and he was ec ecstatic and was just like, this was on in Cherry Bone and the soundtrack <laughs> is like so good. It's all, it's like <laughs> classics. He's like classic rock, but like this yeah. kid is just shredding too. Like you guys got to watch this. No way. And, and he was st so stoked on it. And yeah, my brother and I, I love that. We, we put it in the DVD player and sure enough. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was such a cool movie. And, um, Thank you. you know, I just like, I kind of want to talk about um, maybe a bit more about like the the soundtrack mm -hmm. and sort of that style of music. And I feel like what the the vibe and the style of music in that video, yeah, because a lot of videos are sort of defined by the music, yeah. And how that, it, from my perspective, was a consistent theme to sort of define you as an individual and you as like Sean White, the brand throughout your career. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? No, it's cool. I mean. You know, there's a, the, there's a lot to pick apart with the White Album. I mean, Dave Sione was the, you know, cinematographer. He came through. He did Subject Hawkinson and those those amazing snowboard films that were that for me. I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. He's making a weird pretzel at the end. You're like, whoa, yeah, what? <laughs> why is this in here? But I'm still watching. You know, I, I, I remember being like a fan of his work and then he had this idea to make this film that was like different from snowboard films it didn't really have a storyline but it did have these kind of like cinematic moments where it was raining i was skating or these scenes with uh you know tony hawk and, and bucky lasik like kind of hazing me on the ramp and that was touching on things that were like kind of real and going on at the time and so it was kind of a, a nice depiction of a little bit of what my life was like and and it was a big thing in the sport back then where, well, for one, I I was really like being described as like a, a proficient half pipe snowboarder. And I was like, well, I kind of do it all, but like type obviously, it yeah. And I was like, gosh, I'm really like been, being pushed into this mold and I, I feel like I do everything and like I really want to show that I do everything and this is my way to do it. And then, and then another reason was like, for some reason, I remember people saying like, oh, you know, you got to give back to the sport. You got to give back to the sport. And, and, and but for some reason, they would say that you have to like, well, you should go film a video part. And I was like, I don't understand what that, why that would be giving back to the sport so in any way. kind of like, but, take it, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. That's what I thought. I was like, oh, it's, here's, here's, here's me. <laughs> you know, here's like another thing about me. You know, so I remember that being like, it's fun to do talk to you about this because at the time, like that was a real thing, and in most podcast thing, interviews, I can't really go that deep into it because people are like, uh, "Okay, <laughs> you know, sure. they don't really understand." But yeah. yeah, at the time, that was like, you know, saw, you know, seen as like a really like, you know, cool thing to do within the sport. And I was like, okay. Well, I mean, even to like touch on that too, I think you know a good perspective maybe for anyone that's listening as well or watching, like snowboarding, surfing, skateboarding, I feel like they're really unique uh, compared to a lot of mainstream sports in the way that the your, your like brand image and almost the story you tell and who you are as an individual and your authenticity mm -hmm. is like a big part of, yeah. of why people will like engage with you, right? Mm -hmm. while, while they'll be like, Sean White's sick, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, and yeah. And having something like, your own movie yeah is is important because in a way like did that change the trajectory of like who you would become in your snowboarding mm -hmm. maybe not but like it's this sort of um reference point that like it's important to kind of shed light on yeah. the other aspects of your life and and yeah. in a way yeah it is, it is like an artistic piece that you like give back that people get to experience yeah. time and time again and that part that's like what i i got from it you know what i mean being able to you know having a video part in a snowboarding movie is one thing where you're like okay cool like this is my part here's my little intro idea that they came up with here's the song i've chosen or whatever you know the three or four that got Parameters. approved and then yeah. and then hopefully they'll slot it in toward the tail end of the movie so i feel like you know one of the closers and so that's kind of how it went but when doing your own film it was like okay like this is my chance to kind of show a bit of my life and what i'm into and at the time i think a lot of snowboarders like you know 
the hip hop scene was so big within snowboarding. It was all about baggy clothes and being fresh and new Mercedes and here's my Escalade. You know what I mean? And oh yeah. I, I can't totally. knock it, but it was, you know, it's a moment in time. I mean, I, uh, JP Walker had the cornrows. Everybody was yeah, like, yeah, you exactly. know, he's got boom the, boxes on the yeah, back of the snowmobile. Yeah, totally. It was, it was, it was, it was like, loud. I was like, okay. MFM but, is nollying and like sprain skiers. Yeah, totally <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're like, okay. And I remember like, if you look at pictures of me, like I tried to get into it. And I was just like, oh, I'm just kind of doing what the people around me are doing. And, and then finally I, I was just like, this just isn't me, you know? And I, I kind of found my way. Um, and it was at one of the X games. I won a guitar at X Games. It was like athlete of the games because I had one slope and pipe and I won a car and a guitar. And I remember forgetting about the guitar because I was pretty thrilled. I was like getting my license or whatever. I was like, yes. <laughs> what uh, are the odds? Yeah, like here we go. <laughs> and then I remember people in my neighborhood playing and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like I should, I should get a guitar. I'm like, wait, I have a guitar. It sat under my buddy's bed for like a year and a half or something. I get it out. I fell in love with playing music and then through music, it kind of shaped you know, a bit of like, I guess my persona or something, you know, you, you kind of emulate what's around you and the fashion of the era of that music and the lifestyle and things. And so, and at, at that point I'd already had like grown out my hair and that became kind of like something I was known for. Um, you know, I was very much like Kenny from South Park for a while because you could not see what I looked like as a kid because I had this big helmet and the goggles and the face mask and then you know, I had huge red hair underneath. And so, so yeah, when, when putting that film out, like it was just so cool. I was like, here's my wish list. I don't know how we got that soundtrack. It was insane. Dude, it was insane. I don't, do you have any idea? Like, I mean, I'm, I would have to only speculate what like the rights were oh, yeah. for music. It was like, it's I, north I of six I, figures easy, right? No. <laughs> you don't think the, so? Of what crazy. we ended up paying? Yeah. No, no, it was crazy. I don't know. How, I don't think I could do it today. I don't yeah. know how it went down, but Dave had... Um, Sione had this this woman that worked for him who was like the licensing and rights and she was yeah. just calling like we're making this like movie about this kid. school doc <laughs> like I don't know what she said to get it through but like we had like Foreigner we had Heart oh, yeah. we had these huge bands and I don't know it was just kind of like a moment and we, we, we scored all this music for you know a fraction of the price and um, and so I, I still hear it now like I'll go to certain snowboard shops and I'll just like I'll kind of be sitting there or like even coffee shops in the mountains. I'll kind of, I'll be like, it's too much of a coincidence from this song, you know, cause I know the order of the songs. I've seen the movie so many times. It's just like, I'm like, it's not a coincidence. They're playing the soundtrack. Like it's so cool that that kind of lived on and had a moment. And, and I'll tell you something behind the scenes that was crazy is I, I don't know if you recall, but there's a scene where I like go in for knee surgery. Totally. Yeah. So no, I was get with that, dude, I was, I was, on my way, I had just, I was 15. I got two silver medals at X Games, Slope and Pipe. And I'm like, I'm coming back. I'm going to win the double gold next year. And I did it. I like touched, you know, yeah. that that level. The pinnacle. Yeah. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I'm here. I'm here to stay. I'm and the guy. Then, yeah. And then next year I come and blow my knee out in the half pipe, um, getting ready for finals. So I was just like, wow, what do I do now? And at the time... You know, we had sponsors for the film. Dave's on the hook. We got the music right. We're paying Timelines. for all this stuff. And at this point, I'm like, well, I don't think I can, I can't ride. How am I going to produce this film? Like, it was it was so stressful. It was like one of the worst moments. And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty proud guy. So I was like, I, I'm going to cut checks and get everybody their money back if we're not going to deliver this film. Like, it, we almost didn't make it because, you know, I was like, well, what, I can't ride. What do, we, what do we do? And so I remember talking with Dave and he's like, let's just put it in the film. Let's just kind of work it in. This is what's happening. Sure. It's your career, but this is the moment in time. Like, let's just show you getting surgery. Let's show. And then he kind of cuts to all these, uh, night shots, which was really cool at like Aaron style in Austria and all these different night shoots and things. And, um, it just worked into the film. And then later on, once my knee got better, that's all the footage in New Zealand where I was going nuts. And that's yeah. where they played the crazy on you song yeah, by heart. Totally. So, Wasn't you did like all four nines or something in that section? Yeah. Right? There's and like I was talking to my brother, I want to go back nine, I go front nine, and then I go cab nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 totally. I, I was like a big deal at that point to like link the nines in one run. Yep. And, and then um, 
don't know if it was Frank that was cutting up there at the time because it was Snow Park. Oh, yeah. And so I remember being like, just build me a giant jump to like some rails. I'm like, let's just do like Dude, some hold huge on. Yeah. gaps. Let's, to, like, tell me what was your thinking? Like, <laughs> that was your idea? Yeah. This clip? I don't, yeah, someone, you're going to have to look up this movie and watch all these clips. But like, yeah, yeah what you're describing was like a straight up park cheese wedge yeah. to like a 40, 50 foot gap. It looked like yeah, to just, just a like box. A, a down, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had one of the, it was one of the quarter pipes was like cut in half or cut at the end and then I would like come off a box over the gap onto another box and then we just built this one big wedge just to like a round bar. But again, I was like being, you know, putting this thing like, oh, he doesn't hit rails. He's like, he's the pipe guy, you yeah. know, or pipe yeah. rat, whatever oh, they yeah. called me at the, that time. And um, and so like I made it a thing to like go hit rails. It's funny stories. I actually called Jeff Anderson and I was like, yo, like I really want to, you know, hit rails for this, um, this film I'm doing, like, will you give me a little crash course? Cause I, I already kind of know some things, but I've never done street rails and I was planning on doing a bunch of street rails. And, um, we actually went to a snow garden, a rail garden, rail garden, excuse yep. me. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I hit rails with him for like a week no straight way. and we got ready for the film. It was Dude, really fun. That is so funny. He's like, Dude, I... you're ready. You just got to do that. Yeah. He was, he's walking me through it. And I was like, one of my best moments with him I, he, he, I think he passed shortly after that which mm. was you know so tragic but mm -hmm. that was like kind of this last memory i hold of hanging with him that's so um, cool but yeah he was so thrilled too he was just like yeah it's, we'll walk you through it we'll get you on the you know, yeah, like, yeah, you got so it. motivating so excited to help me and 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 that's why there's so many rails in that that totally uh, yeah i remember that uh, covered everything <laughs> and i mean dude moving on from the white album we're kind of we're going to cover a lot of ground all at once yeah, here yeah. With, with snowboarding you kind of just went on like a decade plus bender after that and i think mm -hmm. what's cool about the white album is is that like it almost like in a way could have just marked the pinnacle of a lot of athletes careers and it mm -hmm. could have been like the pinnacle of yours you know at that time mm -hmm. it could have been like ah, another season or two and i'll, yeah. I'll kind of bail whatever yeah. um but it almost was like the starting point mm -hmm. and what proceeded was you know, three freaking Olympic gold medals yeah, and, and yeah. like five total Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Right? And just like completely dominating half pipe. Did you struggle with, I want to talk about like burnout and like how you kind of have just maintained this motivation mm. in that space over like well over a decade? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean like... Because at a certain point you've just, there's a way that you like you've done it all yeah, yeah. and then you have to did where you keep working towards something or were mm -hmm. you just like trying to s hold on to like a certain yeah. aspect of it does that does that make no, sense totally right? like are we were was i like maintaining or was i yeah, yeah. like in some way it'd be like oh i just want to stay here and like yeah. keep winning or like oh no like this is just the beginning like what the real goal is is yeah. still out there i i always felt like my career was more of a marathon than a sprint like that's how i always looked at it like you know, certain events at times mattered and some didn't. And I was like, yeah, this isn't as important. Like I'm going to save myself and move on to the next, you know what I mean? There was a, a lot more of a calculated sort of approach to it. And then you get this like pure pressure of like sponsorships and, and, you know, um, media situations where like, do we built this giant jump. Like, are you not going to hit it? <laughs> we need to get the shot for the catalog. We need whatever. And there were so many times where I was like, I just don't feel safe. Like I got to walk away from this. Like I'm just not doing it. And so I think there's a lot of those moments in my career where I kind of like prolonged myself and my, my health by just kind of like picking my battles, um, over time. But, um, I would say it was a mixture of things. I mean, that, like you said, I mean, so many years of, of competing, I think in the beginning, like I mentioned before the knee injury, like I had just touched this place that I dreamt of like, wow, what would it be like to win these events to finally be no longer like the future boy or the kid that's gonna be great. Like I can finally be the guy, the guy, I, you know, like I've been groomed to be this thing. And at least in my own mind, I'm like, it'll happen. I'll get crowned one day and I'll be the guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Any athlete, you know, you, you pick up a guitar and you're like, God, I wanna play a show, you know, like yeah. you have that moment that you picture in your mind and it finally happened. And then it was like kind of taken away from me with this knee thing. And so I had to get surgery, I had all this stuff, and I come back and the sport had made a leap forward where people were doing like 1080s now. 
I didn't have 1080s, so I didn't even make podium at that next X Games. So go, going from like double gold, injury, I was on my way to, oh, sorry, I was on my way to win it. I was in first place in qualifying. I'd already won the slope. I was like, here we go, double again. And, and to coming back and not making the podium, I was just devastated. And so that just fueled this fire that really carried me through that next season, which was the Olympic year. And I was on a war path at that point because I was like, I need to get back to this place. I have to. Oh, man, I didn't know and that was the timing of it. Yeah, so 2006 was right yeah. after. Uh, yeah, so knee injury, came back at 18, didn't podium at the X Games, and then 2006 rolled around, and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to win everything. And it was, it was slope style. I did rail events. I did half pipe, and that was the Olympic year. I had an undefeated season, which was pretty wild. Dude, what's the high like at the end of that? Oh, like, because what's the last contest? <laughs> what was the last contest you did that year? And were you just kind of like, it was probably the U.S. Open. I want to say, yeah, in Vermont or something yeah. like that. Where I was like, okay, let's close it out. I just remember just feeling like just invincible. I was just like, this is it. This was that moment I waited for and I worked so hard for and all these things. And then, you know. Um, I think after that, it got a little weird though. Cause like, I remember, <laughs> I remember being like, all right, so I just did this perfect thing. And now I'm starting the season after this. And I'd never done an Olympic season. I didn't know like what was going to happen in my life. I mean, I, I, I went from being recognized here and there to like, I couldn't walk down the street, you know, yeah. I, I couldn't get through the airport, you know, it was really recognizable with the hair and from TV and all the magazines, all the stuff. And so my, my whole world kind of changed. And then like my family was like, how do we keep him the same? And <laughs> how do yeah. we keep everything the same? But it's kid. not, <laughs> you're still a kid at the but time. Dude, I was 19. I was yeah. like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and so I was kind of juggling all that. And then the next season, I remember, um, you know, getting like second place at an event. I was just kind of like broke down a bit. I was like, oh, already this season's not as good as last season. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I just had like a, I had a big issue with it and I was just kind of struggling with like, you know, well, I, sh I got everything I'd ever wanted and now what kind of thing. And it was just tough to like figure out what was next. Um, but, um, but yeah, like, I mean, the glow of that for a long time was just insane. I mean, just to see, my life was never going to really be the same again. And, and just the attention I was getting from the press and, you know, everything was just kind of like, you know, heavy lies, the, 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 the situation, <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, I remember bouncing back for that next season and trying to kind of like stumbling my way through that season and then kind of found the new motivation and the new motivation wasn't like, Oh, I got to make it. It was how do I cement in like a, like a thing to be remembered by. Like a legacy. Yeah, like how do I do something that's that's outside the box that hasn't been done before? And at that point in my career, I'd only done tricks that were kind of already out there. I'd never gone the route of like inventing new tricks. And at that point, I think JP Walker did the first double, which was awesome, <laughs> you know, but you realize that like going in the back country, hitting jumps into powder is like a natural airbag. We didn't really have that in the half pipe. And so that created the idea and Pastrana was working. I remember watching him working on double backflips into the foam pit. I was like, why don't we do that? And so that the, the, the thought came through is like, okay, I want to like change the sport. I want to do something that's never been done before and, and invent tricks. Cause I remember hanging with Tony at the skate ramp. He's like, I've invented like over a hundred something moves. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, granted he was there like in the beginning. So even the little tail stall, yeah, the like yeah, reaper, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna call it the, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, gosh, how do I do something new? How do I, how do I like break the mold and do something that's never been done before? And at that point, I had never myself invented a trick, so that's that was kind of the motivation. So even at that next Olympics, it was the double McTwist 1260. I won. I was at the top of the pipe. I had one more run to go, and I was like, I have to do this. Like, I gotta, I gotta do this trick. Um, everybody's talked about it. Um, you know, I crashed on it at the X Games just before I went out there. I still had the like strawberry on my face. And, um, you know, it wasn't, <laughs> I hate that, that footage. Cause it wasn't the, like, I was lacing them all season. That was kind of like the least worst outcome. Of one. You yeah, know, just, right, it wasn't like, the prettiest one, but totally. I, I willed it to, to, to land. I was like, ah, oh, you know, okay. But, um, but yeah, for me to do that when I didn't need to, and that I felt like I had like left my mark and that was kind of like the motivation for that season. And so every time it kind of changed a little and shifted a little. 
Yeah. Um, like every season you would kind of almost pick out a thing to be like, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Or something would present itself. It'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you know, I heard something in the press of this person saying that like, I don't got it anymore. You know, yeah, that I know. I mean, kind of like, so I was like, okay, well, I'll show you that I do. And then that became the fun sort yeah. of like motivator, you know? Yeah, totally. Well, dude, I mean, cause I could imagine like, you just, you got a lot of shit over the years in snowboarding. I feel like, you know, like there was just this weird, almost, I don't know. It was like, right. Like the bad guys, the guy on top in sure. a way, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. you were the villain cause you were so good Yo, totally. in some ways. And then like, did that, it, it's funny cause I'm wondering if it almost had, you know, must've had this like reverse effect where you're like, Oh, like you people from snowboarding, you're saying I'm like this certain way. Like yeah. I'll show you what winning is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. let's go. Well, the funny part you know, like was... Like Michael Jordan, in a way. You know how he would do that? He would, like, make up stories oh, in his mind yeah, about yeah, other yeah. players, like, saying he sucked or something yeah, and like, being this like... this guy didn't say hi to me. I'm yeah. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to make an example. Um, that didn't really happen till I think, later, you know? I think, for me... I mean, it must just be hard. Like, you're just on such a pedestal compared to all other riders in your arena, you well, know? Yeah, I mean, I just know that, like, the, the kind of human journey I went on through it all because I remember being a kid and I was already recognized in the sport and then you know I'd show up at like Wendell's camp or High Cascade and all these kids come up and talk to me and I was I was young so I was just super intimidated to talk to like anyone older than myself and so the so then the, like the rumors came out like he's he's stuck up he won't say anything I'm like I was horrified. <laughs> so, and they're like, I didn't know what to say to you. Like, we can look at my Pokemon cards, but I don't think that's gonna suffice. This. <laughs> you know, like, what do I, what, what do we have in common? And um, it took me time to kind of like come out of that shell and like talk to people and be more, more social and whatnot. And and so it was just always this kind of like flux within the sport where like people were really into what I was doing as like a breakout young athlete and then like I won a lot so it was like oh it'd be nice to see him fall and then like and then I do fall <laughs> and then I come back and yep. I don't know yeah. it's like and then the media builds up the stories because it is it's a redemption thing it's fun to see you know somebody unfortunately it's 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 a storyline it's like oh I saw this person like kind of lose their way and come back to it you know it's not fun to watch a movie where the main character his, his life's great, everything's going good, and in the middle of the movie, like, it's still great, it's going good, and then the movie ends with his life being great, and everything's good, you're like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Where was the, you know, like, there, there has Where's to the be story? a conflict and a challenge and a something yeah. to overcome to make it interesting storyline. Yeah. And so I kind of felt, I felt like victim to that at times. It's like a tough um, line to walk as well, because I feel like in a lot of traditional sports you have... I don't know, like an F1 driver or yeah. something. And it's kind of accepted that like that guy is going to be serious and focused and trying to be at the top of his game because yeah. it requires so much mental fortitude yeah. to achieve what they're set out, setting out to do. Yeah, yeah. Snowboarding has this like, and this is something I've struggled with as a rider that yeah. on the surface level, people will be like, Oh, you didn't get your run. Well, yeah. you know, you're just out here having fun, anyways. Dude, and I'm like, response like, at the end. <laughs> like, yo, I like, yeah, yeah, had blood, sweat, and tears going yeah. in to get to this point. Like, I'm sad, mm -hmm. and during the process, I'm probably gonna take it seriously because it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, is that something? I'm, I'm sure that was no, like totally. There was like a weird sort of like overarching thing that it was uncool to like want be serious or to try or to be serious and to do things. And like you said, the the the, the sound bite from everybody. If you go back and watch all the footage, everybody gets by like, oh well, I didn't land my run, but the weather's great. I'm just having fun with my friends and like, who cares? And I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> you know, and, and I'd get to the bottom of like, yeah, I was bummed. I really wanted to land that one. I'm like pretty frustrated. I'm going to go for it next time. Or, or people would say like, I'd rather be riding, you know, with my friends around the mountain, which was funny to me. I was like, well, why are you here then? Like, why are you, like, yeah. why are you competing? It's I don't, you like, know, yeah, I never yeah, really totally. got it. Yeah. And, and, and it's nothing to knock anybody. I was just like, oh, like some, some times like it's a, it's a, like a, a weird situation to be put in to be like under pressure and having to compete and having to like your sponsors are watching and the camera's on you and you're expected to do well and and sometimes you don't deliver and that weighs on people and and for some reason for me like I would thrive in the pressure situation 
and I enjoyed competing. It would like bring this new thing out of me where I try a trick that I'd only thought of trying and like nail it because I had to in the last run. You know what I mean? It was totally. like these moments oh, yeah. of like this great sort of thing that would happen. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think I, a lot of it started with me just like wearing a helmet. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, you know, I had a lot of sponsors just like, you got to take the helmet off. Like, it ain't cool. People will they're already talking about you. <laughs> like you won't be in a snowboarding magazine. You won't be any, any, any film parts. You got to take the helmet off. It's just not cool. You know what I mean? So there's always this weird sort of thing. Like I was battling and totally. I grew up in California. So I wasn't like from the mountains. So I was always kind of the visitor showing up, mm -hmm. you know, Tony Hawk said something to me. Actually he said it in an interview once and I was listening to him and I was like, Oh, <laughs> like it kind of struck me funny. Cause he was just like, yeah, I kind of felt bad for Sean. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, like, you know, like, he didn't really fit in at the mountains because he was so young and, and he doesn't live in the mountains. So, like, that crew of snowboarding, like, he didn't really fit that mold completely. But then he was, like, the well-known snowboarder coming to skateboarding. So he didn't really belong here either in many ways. And so I was always kind of in this, like, you know, solo state of just, like, you know, participating in these sports. And so, I don't know, when when... I think things would happen or, 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 you know, things would be said about me or I hear a rumor of whatever. I just kind of like, it just washed out. I was just, you know, yeah. like, okay. And it just became a part of my life. So I just, yeah. Yeah. So normalize just, at yeah, that I just point laugh and go, like, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, dude, you can so only So what like, happened? Yeah, you can only take it like so <laughs> you seriously. You were jerk to like, me at school. I was like, I didn't go to school. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you, you punched a friend of mine at school. Do the yeah. craziest things. And you're like, yeah. what? what grade was this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah. I was homeschooled. Like, what are you talking about? Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. And I think now, like when you look at the internet, it's such a blatant, like a blatant sort of it's just chaos. Yeah. It's chaos of what people <laughs> can just chaos. throw out yeah. there and like, mm -hmm. what happens. And so like, you know, like what is the other option? Like try to I mean, that's what is that? It's the end of Jay and Silent Bob, the movie where they get the printout of all the people that were talking to, and they go door to door, like, hey, are you like <laughs> movie critics 67? <laughs> like, yeah. Did you say this? <laughs> uh, like, what are you going to do? So you just kind of like roll with it. And then at times I just turn it into motivation. You know yeah, what I mean? So, totally. You know, at one point, I remember really wanting to be accepted in the world of snowboarding, like with m just because I was so young, like I, I didn't really fit in. Snowboarding's tough like that too. That's yeah. something I've struggled with because even like on a much, much smaller scale yeah. than yourself, and at least like personally, it, it can feel hard at times because it is such like a, um, and maybe we'll have to get in. I mean, we'll get mm -hmm. into to music and fashion in, in sure. a second here. And I, I think there's probably some cool parallels you'll be able to, to draw with this, but mm -hmm. like, it is such a um, a tight knit community yeah. that, like, in a in a way, you're supposed to be this this rebel and a, and a bad boy or something yeah, like yeah. a lot of these sports. But like, if you color outside of those lines, it's hard not to feel like you're not a part of the club. Mm. And like, sometimes you really just kind of like gotta trust your gut in a way and be like, no, like I'm. You know, for me, it was like I. I'm kind of a nerd. I went yeah. to engineering school in the off season and nice. I like rock climbing, you know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. not an extreme sport, like yeah. box check item uh -huh. for what your off season will look like. Yeah. But, and, and like, it was hard some seasons to be like, Oh man, like I kind of feel like an outsider mm -hmm. in, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious if like having that perspective from snowboarding to be like, mm -hmm. Oh, like, there's uh, this culture around this thing. Yeah. There's sort of like rules to play by. And then like yeah. other ways I'm figuring out rules that you can like totally color outside the lines on. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like, no, totally. did, you, did you feel like that transferred with your um, passions in music and then into fashion? Yeah. Well, I think or maybe just, it drew you to those out instead of like drew you away from snowboarding and towards those things for some reason. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's more just like an environment of, of which I was like, brought up you know what I mean like I didn't live in the mountains so I lived in an area where people surfed and skateboarded and stuff so I surfed and skated when I wasn't snowboarding and and then I remember yeah I was 19 and I um moved to Los Angeles and people were musicians actors you know all sorts of different walks of life and that's just kind of like the environment I was surrounded by and people were doing clothing lines people were doing albums all sorts of stuff and so I was just like oh that's so cool and I would be kind of like 
like you said, like when you go hang up the snowboard and go rock climbing, like it's a different world. And those people that you hang with are probably into different, sometimes different yep. music, sometimes different fashion, sometimes different. And so you just can't, you, you know, like you're fitting in with them and you kind of just like take bits and pieces of your sponge of like what's around you. And so that's kind of like just how it went for me. Plus I knew that, um, you know, there's only so much time to go snowboarding. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't ever park myself and just like watch snowboard videos all day. I would on occasion cause my brother would have them on, but I just rather be participating. You know what I mean? I want to go totally do, get do that. it. I couldn't, I couldn't sit there and watch it. Like it was cool to watch it maybe once and like, Oh, that's a cool trick. I got to try that. I got to make a note to try that trick when I get back to the mountain. But you know, I couldn't just like sit there playing it over and over and then get to the mountain and then go home and watch the video. And it just like, I really wanted to do other things. And I think that took me in the direction later on in life into music and into fashion and into, you know, um, and, and then again, I was kind of like a product of another situation of being sponsored, man. I was sponsored when I was like seven years old. Yeah. So, you know, which which isn't too crazy now when yeah. you think about young writers and yeah. you know, it wasn't but back like in I the had day, a big you know, deal yeah, or whatever. I, I was getting flow product from Burton. I was getting free boards. You got you, you and Nike know, Reds board, running yeah. back hill stuff. Yeah, Freaking yeah, totally. The game. Totally. <laughs> but we were like the first kids, totally. you know, and they were just launching a kids brand. Like, we need people on the program. And so I just kind of fit the bill in California. I was like, they call the Cali rep and go, you know, pick up a board and maybe do some amateur events and uh, that's kind of how it started. But, um, you know, over time within these companies, you know, um, especially Burton or others, like I, I realized that like, I didn't want to take on more sponsors because each sponsor comes with like service days and media agreements and things that you have to perform you have to be at certain events you have to appearance like you have to there's obligations yeah, especially there's at, like whole, the top, at the top yeah there's, there's a, a lot whole of things so if you start doing that with more and more brands i mean you only have so much time to actually practice then go compete and then do the things around the sport travel whatnot and then the more sponsors you tack on the harder it becomes you know a, a lot of pro riders kind of I don't think realize that once you you're like oh, God, i just want to get sponsored then they get sponsored and it's like whoa this went from me just riding every day, having fun, oh, hoping I get sponsored to like, oh, I got to deliver. Oh, and yeah. And that changes things. And so I remember for me, I was like, well, I'd rather have like deeper relationships with the brands I'm working with than to um, go get more sponsors. So it was like, well, instead of, you know, you know, going and getting a, a helmet sponsor, like, why don't I just like sign up for Burton had helmets as well, a company called Red. And then I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that. And then another thing would come through. So it would, it would kind of like be like a bigger deal with a, a particular brand. And then through that brand, they started offering me like signature products. And they're like, oh, we want to make a custom like a pro model snowboard. And you're like, okay. And you know, you got to design it. You got, and then now your brain starts to do this like, well, this, bra this graphic was cool, but next year I really want this, you know, and you start looking at artists and they start looking, wow, it, it just turns your brain on to other things. And so if you kind of do that over time, you know, you have built up this sort of, you know, uh, expertise or experience in that field. And now you can kind of go out and do other things. And, and you realize that, I mean, at the time, I remember switching from Balkum clothing had gone public and you know, the owner was still kind of involved. I loved that brand so much. I mean, they would do yeah. the craziest stuff was at the... Jeff, who was the owner? Uh, Richard Wolcott. Dude, I met him on uh, in Cabo two summers ago. No way. A baker oh, he's sticker, the man. like, on his truck, and we needed to borrow a fork. Side, yeah, side side note, <laughs> but it was funny, like, truck yeah. up small talk through the sticker and stole okay. a fork from the guy and then found out he started Volcom. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. A similar thing happened to me where I was at this, like, deserted beach in Cabo. And, totally. And yeah. we were, like, ran, nine we, palms. Dude, we ran out of water, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's, a tr there's one truck. There's <laughs> one truck. They've got shade. There's a cooler. I'm like, I just got to go ask for water. It was J.P. Walker. No way. just posted up. Like, hey, man, <laughs> what the? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it was so bizarre to just run into him. He's just bronzing. Yeah, oh, for sure. He was just down there. <laughs> it's like him guy. and his lady just like, what's up? <laughs> just spotted the chin. I was like, no way. Vibe, yeah, spotted the chin walking up. You're just like. so distinguished. Spotted the chin and the vibe yeah, walking the up. Yeah, the vibe. I was like, wait a, wait a tick. <laughs> Did it get colder out? <laughs> um, yeah, so, 
Uh, I was jumping around, but yeah, like so. So being involved with brands and things, you just kind of like develop this sort of like, well, what is my style? And what, what does this say about me? Like when people go by the board and they look at the graphic, like what are they going to think about me when they buy it or or see it? Or you know, it's a reflection of you, just like the the film we talked about. So I started diving deeper and deeper into the products and the development and kind of like how I was being portrayed by these sponsors because you're. I felt like my job was to join a brand and then like try my hardest to be myself while fitting in their mold. Oh yeah. So yep. it's like, here's our slogan, here's our product, here's our logo, here's our stuff. Um, and we want you to be you. That's why we're, we're signing you, but you got to kind of fit this mold that we're, we're creating. And so, <clears throat> so so at times like it was like you had to you had to join with sponsors that were like willing to like bend the rules a bit for you you know what i mean i i signed with the energy drink and they were like the first to ever have me like not have the can as my helmet and that was like a I really big deal i remember that you gotta have the can you gotta have the can helmet i was like i can't nah. i can't do it i just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah I mean? sorry it's not my bad man you, well just i had other deals other things it's like look it's just like you guys have to like kind of bend the rules on this one and i'm gonna do all this other stuff for you but like but yeah it was fun to like you know have that part of my life kind of working and i'm sure we'll talk about it in a bit the the line i've, I've created with, with backcountry but um you know, it's so fun to have products go out and I'd be riding on the mountain and like look over and somebody's wearing my jacket. I'm like, I made that. <laughs> like, I, like there's a cool connection there, yeah, you know, like yeah, somebody yeah. spent their hard earned money on this, you know, especially clothing or something. It's like somebody, there's such a, like a big wall of, there's so much product available and you look at it and you go, oh, this person was like, this is like, that's the one, this is the one that best suits me and like what I'm about. And, you know, I, I just think there's such a cool connection there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And is that, that connection that must've, I mean, been like a, it sounds like a huge motivator. You, you got drawn in long ago mm -hmm. to probably thinking about starting your own brand. Yeah. I remember like where that idea come about. I mean, to be completely honest, I mean, I, I had dreamt of it as, as a kid. I remember, <laughs> I remember there were so many riders that were so worried about getting re-signed because it was like, Hey, I did a two year deal. Like, Oh, I got hurt. That was the first year. Now I got to kind of make up for it. Or, you know, I really hope they extend my, my thing here. Cause God, I don't want to, uh, yeah. I just got to the, the major leagues. I don't want to leave. And so, um, I was always thinking like the only person not stressing is Jake Burton, right? <laughs> like, he's not <laughs> stressing, you know, but I, I guess I was around Tony Hawk. He had birdhouse skateboards. He was doing his thing. And like the best skaters wanted to skate for birdhouse. I wanted to skate for birdhouse. It was such a cool thing. And so I think in the back of my head, I always wanted to create my own brand, but I was so loyal to the, the partnerships I had. I mean, they were amazing. I was, you know, like setting myself up financially, which is, pretty great in any type of sport to do I mean just to kind of like secure your future because at that point like I'd kind of burn the life raft so like this is it if this doesn't work out like I gotta I'm gonna I'm gonna get a job with uh, hopefully within the industry because I have enough connections but I think the biggest motivator to go to the Olympics was at the time I don't know if it's still true or not but they would pay for like you know five or six years of college if you made no the way. Olympic team so I was like, okay, like if I can make the team, at least they'll pay my way to go, go to school if I'm going to do something else. So it was like, you know, as much as I was getting flack for like doing big deals and things outside of the sport or, or you know, like trying to, to make a living, you know, I was like, gosh, I, I've looked around and I've watched this person blow their knee out. I've watched this guy not get signed again. And the, the names are coming and going left and right. And there's oh, new yeah. flavors of the month, new writers getting all the attention. I was like, gosh, I really want to like have something at the end of the day when this is all over. You know, I don't think it was like the main motivator for me, but you know, coming from a family where mom was a waitress, dad worked at the city, San Clemente, he was digging ditches in the water department, stuff like that. <laughs> my, yeah, my it's mom, important to think my about mom, dialing in your future. <laughs> my mom would always talk shit that he was, she's like, you know, those guys that they, they did a like a, it wasn't CNN, but one of those like inside the, 
you know, what's really, we're pulling the curtain behind the city workers and what's really happening. Okay, and they were yeah. getting busted for like putting the roadmap up and falling asleep in the truck. Okay, yeah. I just like, that's what your dad's doing. <laughs> he's like, I know it. I but, know it. So as a kid, I was like, that's what he's doing. Like, <laughs> so that's what my dad does, I guess. Uh, but no, Naps. so anyways, like nothing was like, you know, really given at that point. So I thought, wow, if I could really turn this into something and mm -hmm. financial, like, like succeeding financially meant that like, you know, this thing was actually real and I can keep doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was more than just like making a paycheck. It was like, oh, wow. Well, like if the company's successful, we can keep going. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, totally. Like, if you just keep losing money, it doesn't, it, doesn't really add, it stops add up. at some point. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think like they went hand in hand. And, um, and so, you know, there's a lot of kind of things like that that happened when I was really young that really sent me on a, different course you mm. know as i got older mm -hmm. yeah totally and then where um you know fast forward mm -hmm. to a couple years ago yeah and um well actually i think the you know it must have been a conversation you were having with backcountry at the time mm -hmm. was you and i shared kind of a crazy pow day at jackson oh yeah like yeah. three years ago or something like that uh -huh. just a bottomless insane day that was nuts um <laughs> And yeah, I remember, you know, there was sort of some talk of you collaborating with Backcountry mm -hmm. for this brand idea you kind of had and um, how, yeah, you know, how, how did all that come about? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, a bittersweet sort of story. You know, I, gosh, I'd ridden for Burton my whole life since I was seven. Um, I think I stopped riding for them just after the Olympics in Korea and, you know, I was trying to figure out what I was doing next and we were talking and you know, Jake passed away and, and there was a lot of like, what's going to happen with the brand now. And he was such a big figure in these things. And, and so that just kind of stirred a lot of things up. And, you know, I really thought to myself, well, gosh, if I'm going to do another Olympics, which at the time, like I was pretty thrilled with like, you know, going out on the high note with, with the, the Korea Olympics and winning that. And, <clears throat> and I remember thinking, like, gosh, if I do it again, it would be in incredible to, you know, have my own brand, my own board, my own thing that, yeah. that would kind of carry me on after if this is my last Olympics, which at the time I was like, I got like four more in me. Trust me, like, <laughs> trust trust my, me I was that guy. <laughs> baby, I'm in my prime. Yeah, oh, totally. I was like, eh, we'll just go grow the hair back. We'll bring it back. <laughs> like, let's go. It's all muscle memory. You know, and everybody's like, okay, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> These kids aren't that good. Uh, um, so, so yeah, whatever I was telling myself at the time, um, you know, but I, I had like a big journey sort of to get to the place to win that last Olympics where it was kind of like falling in love with the sport again. And so like, I still kind of had that love of the sport. So that's why I was like, oh, I can keep going. Let's go. And, um, and then the idea of the brand came about and it just kind of like every twist and turn, you know, I'm thinking like, well, what, what would I do if I re-signed with another brand and I'd be sitting in the same exact position again after this Olympics going, well, now what, you know? And so, like I said, this, this was something like, wow, if I created a, a, a brand and, and it'd be something that like, man, I could build my own team. I could like influence the production of like new and like creative products, technical things that might alter the course of the sport or different things, you know, and it was like, wow, it's just such a more enticing thing than to, to sign up with an existing brand. And, and like I said, like, you know, nothing but love for Burton. And, and it was such a heart wrenching thing to, you know, have Jake not in our lives anymore. And so, yeah, it just kind of set me on this path. And then another thing really happened where my brother and I I was probably 16 and it wasn't cool to travel with mom and dad anymore. My brother kind of took a look at his snowboarding career because he had his own sponsors. Um, <clears throat> and he was just like, I just don't think it's going to happen for me. But, you know, I could support Sean. We could take, you know, and, and, and he became my like team manager. And so for people, people listening that don't understand what that is, is, he basically worked for Burton Snowboards, but was assigned to look after me as a rider. And he came on the road with me, but he was really talented artist. He's an incredible artist. And he, you know, not only himself in his capabilities, but like he just had his finger on the pulse of that world and design and things. And so he, he became my team manager 
also my photographer. So he's snapping all the pics and, and that we're using for all the ads and all the stuff. A lot of them, not all of them. And then and then he started d designing and helping me develop all the signature products I had okay, across yeah. numerous brands. And so we had a ton of success in that space. And, you know, I just he went through a lot in his life. I, you know, was was in my peak sort of ego driven state in my life, <laughs> you know, okay, yeah, like, totally. whatever, we all hit it. And, and I remember we were just butting heads and brothers and business and it just like, yeah, we just kind of walked away. And so when I thought about doing my own brand, I was like, I just don't see myself doing it without my brother being involved. And so I called him up and it was just like perfect place, perfect timing. I'm like, look, I've grown a ton as a person. I know you've done a lot. Like we're older now. You got a kid. Like we're, it's a different situation, you know? If, if you most. Yeah, no, it's like if you trust me again to like, you know, it's a big, he's, he's got to provide for his family and like banking on me to that this thing's going to go. And anyway, so like he signed up for it and that's when I was like, ah, oh, like it just started to like, then we started gaining momentum and that's when the talks of backcountry happened. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Why don't we like, you know, lean on an expert in the space to help us, you know, have a leg up in this, this fight. Cause you're, you're going up against a lot legacy brands that have been around for 40, 50 plus years. And yeah you want to be competitive with them and, and you know, what's your customer service going to be like, who's picking up the phone when the, something breaks or something happens or there's you know, who's getting the feedback to make things better for next year. Like there's just so much infrastructure and that's where backcountry really kind of stepped in and helped us a ton. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, you kind of not only have like the, I mean, have that infrastructure, you know, and that, mm -hmm. that distribution, that reach is oh, such yeah. like a, a slingshot yeah. in a way, like a, a tactical slingshot, if you will. Totally. You know, totally. it makes a lot of sense to um, make a partnership like that. Yeah. And we were rushing to get it, a lot of it done because there's certain rules for you to use products at the Olympics. And we had to, we had to hit the markers for. Interesting. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be. Uh, let's say Coca-Cola sponsoring the Olympics and sh somebody shows up with like a Pepsi snowboard and they're like, wait a minute, oh, you know, like uh, the yeah. kind of guerrilla marketing, yeah. like yeah. we snuck it in there. Like, so there's certain rules and hurdles you have to clear to get your know, products cleared. And, and normally you have the outfits, which is the, like the Olympic uniforms, things like that. Those are all sponsored, but your board isn't. And I was like, oh, if we could just push and get these boards done. And that's why you're looking actually at this. This is something really fun and exciting we did where we took the 51st boards off the press uh, the the pressing machine and I signed them up. We did this like little leather you know cigar band sleeve and I numbered them and and that was like a fun tease for the brand. But it was also like to get our product into the marketplace so that I could use the board at the Olympics. So you know a lot's changed since then. But but it's fun. I I, I think you know the way I look at it now is like wow there were so many you know hiccups and things along the way to get to where you were going and and I'm in that sort of fun phase again almost like with snowboarding almost like with skateboarding where i'm like you're you're making mistakes but you're learning from this or that you know like there's little things to be gained every time so yeah yeah um, well that's so, really cool i mean it's yeah. just this whole other uh journey you're kind of able to like embark on that yeah mimics growth and yeah. maybe the appeal of like being able to like set goals and grow and succeed and oh totally work in that direction and like we talked about like giving back to the sport or doing certain things i mean like being able to, you know, like we're, we're seeding, you know, young, talented riders with product and things to help their career and stuff. And like, there's, we're just touching, like, you know, there, we're coming into our second season of the company. So it's definitely like, we're just kind of like, okay, I want to get like, you want to <laughs> crawl, then you want to walk, then you want to run. And like, you know, you don't want to jump the rungs and the ladder, but like, you know, I think there's so much, that I can do with the brand that I couldn't do in my co competitive career. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and wouldn't yeah, have totally. wanted to at the yeah, time. Yeah, totally. You know right. I mean? To I like, like take those risks. It was pretty, you know, a lot about me. I was like, I want to, you know, and we've been able to raise money for charities, do all these different things. It's been, it's just been so exciting. And, and then, like I said, that, that sort of feeling of like, you know, I was here at Park City, and I had I hadn't seen one of my boards out yet. Like I'd in the been wild, traveling. yeah, in the wild, and and like it was like an eight year old girl got off the chairlift on my board, and my heart just kind of like sank. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I was like I gotta say something, you know? <laughs> I crush over there. I was like, 
pretty cool board you got there. And I'm like, covered it. You don't I know what I look like. She's like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, any, can I get a high five? She's like, uh, okay. You know. <laughs> and then I think her chaperone or coach or, you know, whatever yeah. clocked me. I was like, are you? And I yeah, took the goggles off and hung out with the yeah. kids for a second. But like, just so cool. That's really I, cool. You know, I know what that meant to me to have my first board and, and to be that age and, um, to know the ripple effect I, I could be that for another generation. And yeah, it's just fun. And like I said, I'm working with family and, you know, one of my best buddies is, is, um, uh, his mom worked the check-in counter at the U S open in Vermont. And she's like, Oh, my son's got red hair too. You guys should hang out. We were probably like seven or eight years yeah. old. His name's uh, Miles Nathan, you know, local. So it wasn't who, what, Paige? It was Paige. Uh, no, Paige was the other, of the Mannings. Yeah, the Mannings. Which are, are also, also, yeah, I know. I was like the check in lady at the US Open. I remember yeah, one uh, that really resonated. Yeah. It was um, the same the, ladies the every year. Yeah. yeah, the Nathans. It was Paige and, and, um, and, uh, uh, Miss Nathan. Why am I blanking? <laughs> uh, um, oh my gosh, she's gonna, um, it's okay. Uh, it's one of those moments where I like, I think Jane, you just said, Jane. Yeah. yeah, you just said it a Jane second Nathan, ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, excuse me. I was like, what? oh my, then uh -oh. I picture her watching this, like you, might, you better. <laughs> no, uh, Jane. And so I became friends with the Mannings and I became friends with, uh, Miles and, and, you know, we kind of had separate paths. He, he, you know, moved to New York, started working in finance, other things. And, and he's come to help me, cool. you know, with the brand. So there's like three or four of us really like tackling this thing yeah. it's so much fun with the metal yeah yeah that's cool yeah. well dude give me a lowdown of um let's kind of just like run through what your uh maybe your like daily driver kit is yeah. with the line yeah you mean like my favorite products or yeah i don't know like what's your like go-to yeah. i'm gonna go it's a get myself a 1260 Oof. outfit uh <laughs> yeah i mean i'm gonna go bag a, a double mickey, a land, a double mickey. <laughs> um, with the side order of uh from no, 10 so uh, it's tough to say i mean now that i'm not like hellbent to get to the half pipe it's been fun to just like i pack three boards with me and that's kind of how the line was developed i was like i don't want to like excuse me i don't want to like splash the the marketplace with like a ton of boards like I want to be really great at the things that we do and very like quality over quantity and I was like what's the perfect setup I was like three boards you know you got your kind of softer maybe a little smaller board for the park and for rails something like that it's a little more playful something that's gonna handle in in the pipe so that's the AMF twin and then um, I was like oh we need something obviously that I'm gonna compete on and so a little stiffer, a little thinner on the rails for the edges and the pipe. And um, so I was like, okay, that's perfect. And then we made just like a fun, playful, um, I don't really want to call it a powder board. It's just kind of all mountain. All board. mountain. Yeah, because yeah. I ride it switch, I do. Yeah. And so, um, and it's really fun on the groomers, which, you know, my, unfortunately my, my you know, I was on the, in the mountains all the time and yeah, I would get some powder days here and there, but it was mostly like trying to get to the half pipe or trying to learn new tricks and hitting the slope style yeah. and stuff like that. And so now it's like, that's, that's, that's my kid. I bring the three boards, um, so kind of like ready for whatever. And yeah. then it just depends. I usually, I grew up at the beach in California, so I'm a bit of a wuss in the cold. So I like, I, I bring a down jacket everywhere. I think I it happens with age. I swear it. when I was like 15, I didn't care yeah. about the, how cold I was. And then now yeah, I'm like, yeah. I have like three parkas I'll bring with me into the back oh, country. Totally. Like I've I wear, seen... I wear puffy, uh, insulated pants now, oh, wow. which I just started running like two seasons oh. ago. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the well, maybe inspo for the next yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I remember seeing JJ Thomas at the half pipe while you know he was coaching me, and he's, he was literally wearing like four jackets because he's you know we're up in Calgary, and he's like, oh my god, we got it. <laughs> he's like standing there like, great, <laughs> one more. <laughs> but yeah, I usually pack like a little mix of things, but um, we kind of did the same thing with the line. I was like, I don't want to come out with like all these products. I really want to come out with. Like, here's what I would like compete in. Like, here's the perfect sort of like lightweight, you know, windbreaker type of performance jacket. And then here's like the puff jacket, you know, puffy something just like cruising around the city um, in New York or anywhere you are, you can kind of just throw this on and, and, and go. And so it kind of, it went from like, what would I wear on the mountain or need to compete and like have a, have a great time on the mountain? And then like, what could I also have in my bag that would like double as something as I could wear out and about? Cause like for me, 
I was always in like, I'm in Tokyo or I'm here. I got to go to a nice dinner. I got to meet these folks, uh, you know, a big, big sponsor or brand or something. And you can only pack so much stuff. And so I started like creating items that were kind of, Crossover. yes, this is made for the mountains, but you could wear it around. You know what I mean? So um, even the underlayer, like we had these kind of like mock neck sort of, they're base layers for riding, but, you know, I, I wore one to like, uh, a really nice award show with a suit over it and it worked great totally worked yeah, you know catch you mean? at a nice sushi dinner yeah well you know you get that like apre ski or an aspen you're in these places and it's like it's nice to not have to like rush back and change like oh i just throw my coat over this and i'm still good, good to go. go yeah um so we're kind of basing the line a lot off of just like my personal life and and things that i need and and now as the line is is slowly growing we're getting into more kind of like Hey, it's like I I flew here in this. Like, yeah, perfect travel yeah, yeah, gear, yeah. like that yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, what would I use Athleisure. and what do I need? Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. And 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 then we're we didn't really lean into it too hard. You know, we kind of dipped a toe with it, but we really wanted to get into kind of spring summer because it's something that like I go mountain biking. I go. I do want to rock climb. Actually, <laughs> I'm gonna hit you up. Hit I really me up, will. buddy. Um, um, cause I have a bunch of friends that do it and they're like, you got to start with just like bouldering and then you yeah. can another, uh, yeah. another time. Yeah. But, um, I do a lot, you know what I mean? I'm always, I'm out surfing, I'm out skating. So I was like, oh, we should definitely like continue on with, you know, I wanted to, to, to kind of start in the snow world cause I know it so well and then kind of branch out into these other spaces. But yeah, it's been a thrill to like work on these products, develop them, see people wearing them and, you know, um, totally slowly building the brand with, with, uh, good people. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's really excited to hear. Yeah. yeah we're, thanks. you know, it's, um, it's cool to see the, the momentum and kind of the mindset you've taken from snowboarding and to carry that over into something that will, you know, ideally turn into its own legacy yeah. in a way. Oh yeah. That'd right? be, that'd be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I mean, we're, we're sort of kind of rounding out things here mm -hmm. and, um, it's been so sick to get your like perspective on a lot of these things. It's just, you know, fun to shoot the shit on a lot of these like yeah, reminiscing yeah. questions I've been stewing on about your oh, career yeah. <laughs> and like, um, you pick your brains about your process and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of just curious, like what's on, what's on your horizon? What's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm obviously you have the brand you're working on. Mm -hmm. What is the, uh, the near future looking like for you? Yeah. What do you got going um, on? Gosh, there's there's one thing in particular I'm so excited about. I can't actually talk about it just yet, which is so frustrating. But it is it is within the world of of snowboarding, action sports, and it's got to do with the youth and and you know developing programs and like facilities for the youth. And it's something cool. really exciting that I can't wait to talk about. And you know, it's like yeah, it's just something that I think will again be something that lives on way past my career and something that like will kind of like hopefully change the way the sports you know um you know participated in mm. a, a couple different things but yeah i think I, I i think selfishly my my sort of goal after the olympics was like i just want to have some fun i just want to like i think you earned it i just want to go yeah and so like <laughs> Oh man, I, I told my girlfriend, I was like, look, like I'm going to power through this win, lose, draw, whatever. Like we got to go have some fun. And, and so I, I just like set my sights on traveling for fun rather than like business. Like, Oh, we'll work a, you know, here I'm in Utah. Like, why don't we pop over and catch one day here and then off to the next? Like, I was like, no, I just want to go somewhere and like have no agenda. And good for you. Yeah. So yeah, I, I ended important. up in some amazing places like Antarctica and Indonesia and, you know, um, yeah, kind of all over the world, um, the Maldives, all these, all these, you know, destination type, like, ugh, like I've, I've wanted to take some time and mostly warm places because it's not where my profession takes me. Yep. But, um, and then after that, it's kind of settled, like you can only do that for so long. And then you're like, okay, like I want to sink my time and effort into something. And a lot of it, I would say majority of it's been this brand, uh, white space and, and, um, and then the rest of it is now these kind of seeds that I've been planting within the sport that hopefully will will become something, you know, um, incredible. So that's that's been the goal so far. Uh, yeah, I think just normal things. Trying to, trying to be around for birthdays, holidays, and then yeah. yeah. I told you before the the show started or podcast started that <laughs> I 
I, I had a pretty bummer last season. Yeah, totally. I started the season out. I was messing around. I'm like, I'm going to get crazy this, this season. Like, no one's going to see it, but I'm going to do all this crazy stuff that I don't have to, but I'm going to do it anyways because, it, it, you know, it was, I was just Fire motivated. I was yeah. fired up. I don't know yeah. why. And because um, I didn't want people to think that I just kind of like sailed off into the sunset. I was like, no, this is, this is, I, I love doing this. And it got even more fun to participate when I wasn't, you know, expected to do things. And so you know, right out the gate, I'm doing like a butter. I put my hand down and my shoulder pops out of socket. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like what? Why? <laughs> yeah, I like sliding on my back. I like put it back into socket and I'm like, okay, it's not good. <laughs> back know? to the drawing board. Yeah, and so that really kind of like put a damper on the whole season. So I didn't really get to ride. So I'm, I'm, let's knock on that. I'm, I'm fired up for this season to Sick, like man. ride powder. I've got some, some, some um, backcountry trips lined up. I've got you know, some, um, fun sessions, um, you know, for pipe and park. I really want to hit jumps. Yeah. Cause I haven't been in like, I stopped doing slope style after I want to say the Sochi Olympics. I was like, ah, it's too much. And just like hitting jumps sounds so much fun. And right when I stopped doing slope style, they, cre they invented the bag that goes all the way down oh, yeah. the landing. I was yeah. Like, really? Like, Come on. <laughs> I threw like 15 front triples to my back. <laughs> and then they're like, look, we got this now. I'm like, Really? Fantastic. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot of it. I'm so thankful to have, you know, backcountry in my corner. They've been so like instrumental in not only like launching the brand, but like servicing the customers and like supporting my vision and what I want to do. And yeah, I'm just like in this kind of like, yeah, aftermath sort of glow of my competing career and yeah, and surprised to see that there's still a lot out there. It's really fun. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you of again. Thank you for your time. Thanks for just being down to shoot the shit and of talk snowboarding and fashion yeah. and life. We'll and get into it. Skateboarding, <laughs> maybe rock climbing. Of course. <laughs> the final frontier. <laughs> and um, yeah, in the meantime, thank you to everyone who tuned in. If you liked the episode, please make sure to like, comment, or subscribe. If you have any questions about white space, make sure to reach out to your local gearhead. Please. And in the meantime, from the crew at Backcountry, we will see you out there.